Hello, my name is Alan Thum, and today I'm going to talk about using Bayes' theorem in hydrocarbon exploration. Now, uh, hydrocarbon exploration is a risky business, and we need to try to reduce the risk to try to kill or cure. Basically, we want to find out if our prospect is light, highly likely or less likely to work before we spend a lot of money drilling a very expensive dry hole. Now, typically, um, success rates in oil and gas exploration are about 30%. So 70% of wells don't work. They're very expensive. So what we want to do is kill or cure. So ideally, we'd want to have uh, a cheap way of finding out whether something's going to work or something isn't going to work. But these studies are never 100% reliable, so we also want to evaluate what the chance of success of the study is and its likely uh, impact. Now, one of the ways we do look at that is, uh, in terms of value information exercises, is Bayes' theorem. So this is uh, Thomas Bayes, 18th century English pastor, and he came up with this probability-based theorem. So the probability of A, given that B has happened, is the probability of B, given that A has happened, times the probability of A in the first place, divided by the probability of B in the first place. And um, this has been used in very many fields, one of which is medical diagnostics. So if we look at, uh, let's say you have been tested for a relatively rare disease, affects one in a thousand people, and you've got positive results. How scared should you be? Do you need to see the undertaker right now, plan your funeral? Well, maybe not yet. So, arranging the formula, probability of disease given a positive test is the probability of a positive test given that you have the disease, i.e. the accuracy of the test, times the probability of having the disease in the first place, times the probability of having uh, you know, a positive test. So, um, rearranging the formula and plugging in the numbers, 99% chance of test accuracy, uh, 0 0.001 or 1 in 1,000 chance of having uh, the disease, 99% times 0 0.01 uh, times 0 0.01 times 0.99% gives you a chance of 9%. Now, 9% is kind of counterintuitive, kind of assuming it's 99% accurate. Well, even in a 99% accurate test, 10 people in 1,000 would have false positives. The one person who is, does actually have disease should get picked up by the test, but so should quite a few people who don't. So we need subsequent tests to check, the, check them out. Okay, so what's all this got to do with oil exploration? So we've got a work example which I'm going to talk about using uh, control source electromagnetic. You can also do it for 4D seismic, you can do, do it for all sorts of things. But the key thing here is to try to increase the expected monetary value. So geologists have identified a, a, a prospect, risk a 25% chance of success, value of success is $100 million, value of failure is $30 million, expected monetary value of plus $2.5 million, which isn't actually very high, so you kind of need to polarize the risk. So a little bit here on expected monetary values. So you drill a prospect, you have two branches. You have a success branch, 25% chance, $100 million. So expected value of that branch is $25 million. You've got a failure branch, 75% chance of failure, minus 30, minus 22.5 million. Add those two up together, you get a total expected value of uh, 2.5 million. Okay, not uh, positive, but still needs to be increased. So you need to polarize the risk. And the four outcomes from a survey, you got a true positive, a false positive, a true negative, and a false negative. And this is how they line up. So you have positive indicators. You can have a true positive, you can have a false positive. The true positive is a chance of success times the survey reliability. The false positive is chance of failure times one minus the survey reliability. True negative is the chance of failure times the survey reliability. And a false negative is the chance of success times 1 minus the survey reliability. So when you plug in all the numbers, this is what you get. So your true positive is 22.5% if you have positive indicators. You have false positives, 7.5%. Uh, so still quite a chance of uh, it, it going wrong. True negative, uh, so that's your chance of failure times your survey reliability, 6.75%. And the false negative, where you've actually missed a discovery uh, through uh, false negative indications, 25%, that's 0.1, not 0.2, uh, you know, 2.5%. Okay. Um, so, so what you do next is you look at what do we got if we've got positive indicators. So you've got your true positive, 
your false positive, you're already on the uh, positive indicator branch, and you get 75% chance of success if you got a true positive, uh, if you got positive indicators. That sounds pretty good. Okay, so not 100%, but it's a lot better. So if you got the value of the positive indicators, so the success value has now gone down because you need to add the cost of the survey in. So it's got now 92 million. And the failure value has gone up, uh, has also gone down uh, to 38 million. So 75% of that is uh, 69 million and 9.5 million. So if you have a positive values, you've got an EMV of 59.5. That sounds pretty damn good. And the value if you give up now is minus 8 because that's the value of the um, survey. What if you got negative indicators? Will they kill the prospect? Well, survey's been done, uh, got negative indicators, and your chance of having uh, a false negative is uh, 3%. So if you've got negative indicators, you're not going to bother trimming. You're just going to stop now. And when you put in all the values through here, uh, you've got uh, you know, 2.75 million expected value of uh, in the success case, and then that's the value of the negative case. And uh, so the EMV of this tree is minus 36.1, which is pretty pretty lousy. But uh, if you give up now, 8 million, okay, that sounds uh, sounds better. So uh, when you roll up all the outcome tree, so you got your true positive, your false negative, and if you've got negative indicators, you're not going to bother drilling. So you're just going to uh, say no. Uh, so when you add up these 20, uh, you've got uh, that 20.7, 2.85, minus 5.6. Uh, so that gives you 12.5 million EMV, which is substantially more than the uh, uh, previous uh, value before we drill. Okay, that sounds really good. But um, how sensitive is it to all the different um, inputs that we have? So run some sensitivities. So you've got your co survey cost. If we add 2 million to that, so from 8 million goes to 10 million, or if we reduce the survey cost to 6 million, what happens if we increase the dry well cost to 35 million, reduce the dry well cost to 25 million, uh, reduce the value of success or increase the value of success, reduce the original cost, increase the original cost, reduce the survey reliability, increase the survey reliability. So these are cases 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So I've charted them up here. So that's your base case. So no survey with survey. So the reds are no survey and the sky blues are the with survey. The, uh, this is the EMV difference. So how much profit are you going to make on the information? And that's your cost of your survey. So the ones that uh, where you have got, uh, where you actually make a loss, are case 10, where survey is less reliable. Uh, so your chance of having false uh, positives or false negatives increases, or uh, when you increase your survey cost. So it's very sensitive to these two. Uh, obviously, you're in a situation where if you increase your, uh, you know, decrease your chance of success, uh, increase your dry hole costs, etc., the survey becomes far more valuable. If you increase the value of your survey uh, in terms of uh, you know, the survey becomes cheaper and more reliable. That also gives you a lot of value. So the key factors here are your survey reliability, your dry well cost, less so the survey cost, less so the original cost, uh, and then the value of the, the prospect overall. So what you're looking at is effectively a situation where you want to have an increase in your EMV that's greater than your survey cost, because otherwise you just wouldn't bother. You know, in this sort of situation, you might just drill it anyway. Um, so using Bayes' theorem is, is very useful because you value, you look at the value of information that you're going to, going to have. Inputs here are fictional, they're realistic, they're based on real, real numbers, I've altered them a little bit. Um, but, uh, there are quite a lot of challenges with this. So the challenge is getting the inputs reasonably accurate because quite a few of these things you don't know. So, which is why you do the sensitivities. Uh, how reliable is your estimate the likely effectiveness of the survey. Okay, you may have, uh, you've done your modeling, uh, pre-survey, you know, your rock physics and things like that. You've done, you've looked at other cases, you know, whether it's added or subtracted value, uh, particularly if it's, it's a technique that's used quite often in the splay funds of CSEM and the Barents Sea in Norway. Um, 
how accurate is your pre-survey chance of success? How accurate are your cost estimates? You know, costs can go down as well as up. Um, and how do you account for any intangible benefits of the survey? You know, what, what happens in terms of uh, getting a more accurate in, um, input on your recoverable volumes? Any safety implications that you may uh, see, you know, any potential hazards that the survey might spot? And also, how does this translate to other prospects within the play? So these are quite difficult things to put in there. And it's quite easy for some people to game the system. And I, I, I know of it happening. But the key here is to be honest, to look at the sensitivities and see where they are. So thank you very much. Uh, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.